Good day, everybody. This is Mr. Johnson with you. This is a lecture on 1.5 integrated rate equations coming out of our AP Chem 2 book. Of course, still in the unit on reaction rates or kinetics. We're going to skip the first several pages of our book because it goes through the, the calculus derivations of these integrated rate equations that I'll be sharing with you in a moment. So know that we're skipping the first several pages of our book. Uh, and off we go. So we've skipped ahead. We're now on page 58 of our ebook, looking at this section titled Graphical Method for Distinguishing Orders of Reactions. You so far have learned one of the three methods that you'll ultimately learn for determining what the order is for a reactant and therefore to be able to write the rate law. In the last lecture on using experimental data to determine a rate law, we looked at the effect that changing the concentration has on the rate and then we're able to evaluate whether it was zero, first, or second order. I want to remind you that that only works for initial concentrations and for initial rates. And that method allowed us to determine the order for more than one reactant and to ultimately write the overall rate law. This is another method for determining an order of a reactant. But this method only allows you to determine the order of one reactant at a time. And we can write the rate law once we know that, but do know that we will only be determining the order for a single reactant at a time using this method. So this method is based on a graphical analysis of data, whereas the last method was based on a numerical analysis of data, those tables we used. We're looking at figure 151 here, which are three graphs that are typical for a first order reaction. I want to remind everybody that if it's a first order reaction or a first order reactant, there's an exponent of one with the concentration, meaning the relationship between concentration and rate is linear. That, that relationship means that as the reaction proceeds, the concentration of the reactant affects the rate. As the reaction proceeds and there's less and less reactant, the rate goes down. Meanwhile, the consumption of that reactant or the rate of the consumption of that reactant goes down as well, which is what we're seeing here in this graph. A first order reaction will have a nonlinear concentration versus time graph. Meanwhile, for reasons that don't need to be clear to you right now, there's a derivation in calculus that proves this, the natural log of concentration versus time for a first order reaction will be linear. And the inverse of concentration won't. What you want to hang on to from this section is that a first order reaction, a first order reactant, will be linear for the natural log of concentration versus time. First order reactions have linear data sets of natural log of concentration once again versus time. Well, looking at these typical graphs for a second order reaction here at the top, um, and the rate law is written, right? We've got an exponent of two with concentration, that's second order then the concentration certainly affects the rate and it affects it exponentially. Concentration versus time will not be linear in this case, nor will the natural log of concentration versus time be linear. But the inverse of concentration versus time will. And again, there's a derivation that establishes that just, to, just accept that's the case. The inverse of concentration versus time for a second order reaction or a second order reactant is linear. For a zero order reaction, where the exponent is zero and therefore concentration disappears and the rate law is just rate equals k, concentration versus time will be linear. Natural log and inverse of concentration won't. Again, for a zero order reaction or a zero order reactant, concentration versus time is linear. Now let's talk about these slopes. The slope of the concentration versus time graph on a zero order reaction is negative. The slope of inverse versus time is positive. Because if a reactant concentration is going down over time, the inverse of it should be going up. And if we look back at the prior page, the slope of the natural log versus concentration, excuse me, slope of natural log of concentration versus time is also negatively sloping because if the concentration of reactant goes down over time, so will its natural log. So to summarize, if it's a first order reaction, natural log of concentration versus time is linear. If it's a second order reaction, inverse of concentration versus time is linear. And if it's a zero order reaction, concentration versus time will be linear. And here is a nice graphic depicting that. Again, for a zero order reaction, concentration versus time is linear. Remember, a symbol in brackets represents concentration. For first order, the natural log of concentration against time is linear. And for second order, the inverse of concentration versus time is linear. The next thing we're going to do is prove why the rate law constants are equal to the slopes of these lines or the negative slopes. And then I'm going to write the integrated rate laws for you. 
the y equals mx plus b versions of these graphs, which are what are called the integrated rate laws. So why are these rate law constants equal to slope or negative slope? Well, it all comes down to, to units. We know that the slope of a line is rise over run, y over x. In this zero order graph, the y value is the concentration, the x value is time. So the slope's unit would be concentration over time. Time is always measured in seconds, so it would be concentration over seconds, or we could say molarity over seconds. But because this is a negatively sloping line, the slope of this line is actually the negative concentration over time, or the negative molarity over time. So let's write that out. The slope, abbreviated m, is equal to negative molarity over seconds. Or we could say negative molarity times seconds to the minus 1 we want if we wanted. Meanwhile, we should know or remember what the unit for a rate law constant for a zero order reactant or reaction is. Remember, rate law constants always have seconds in the denominator, and they always have an exponent for molarity that is one less than the overall order. Well, if this is a zero order reaction, one less than zero is minus one, so the rate law constant unit should be one over seconds times molarity to the minus one. Let's write that out. And there it is, but we know we could bring molarity up to the numerator if we wanted and just change the sign of the exponent and would be left with molarity over seconds. That's the same as 1 over seconds times molarity to the minus 1. So the slopes unit we know to be negative molarity per second. The rate law constant unit we know to be molarity per second. And that's why the rate law constant is equal to the negative slope, given the agreement of their units minus the minus sign. We could do this same thing for first and second order. Derive the unit for the slope and realize it's equal to the opposite unit for the rate law constant. The rate law constant is equal to the negative slope as well for a first order reaction. And that's because these two lines are negatively sloping, that's why we need the, need, the, need the negative sign in front of m. Meanwhile, for the second order reaction, the slope will equal k because it's already a positively sloping line, and again, that's due to unit agreement as well. So, the slopes of these lines are equal to the rate law constants, but for the two negatively sloping lines, we've got to switch the sign and for the positively sloping line, we don't. Next thing we're going to do is derive these integrated rate laws so that you can use them to solve some fantastic problems here in a bit. So we'll start with the zero order graph. Uh, we know the general equation for a line to be y equals mx plus b. The general equation for a linear line is y equals mx plus b. So what I'm going to do is substitute in for y, m, x, and b what they are equal to in this zero order graph. Let's see what I come up with. All right. Well, the y value is the concentration. So in place of y, I've got concentration. The slope we know to be equal to the negative rate law constant. So for slope, negative k. The x value is time. I use, I'm using the variable of t for time, which will almost always be in seconds. And then the y-intercept is some earlier value for concentration, some initial concentration. The abbreviation we use in integrated rate laws for initial concentrations is a little subscript O. So A in brackets is the concentration of A. A sub zero in brackets is the initial concentration of A. That's our y-intercept. This A is any other concentration along the line. This is the initial concentration. This is any other concentration along the line. And that, folks, is the integrated rate law or the integrated rate equation for a zero order reaction. Now, what do we do with it? We'll talk about it in a bit. I want to do this for first and second order as well to publish those for you. So we will plug in to y equals mx plus b what they are equal to in terms of this first order graph and as well in terms of the second order graph and see what those look like. And there it is for first. It's going to look a lot like zero except that instead of the concentrations being in place for y and the y-intercept, it's the natural log of the concentrations. Again, this subscript zero is the initial concentration, the natural, the natural log of the initial concentration, and this is some concentration anywhere along the line other than that initial point. They look very similar because the slopes are both negative k. Let's see what it looks like for second order. And there it is. Again, it's going to look similar to the prior two, except that for the y value and the y-intercept, I've got inverse of concentration and inverse of initial concentration. And this time there's no negative in front of the k because in this case, as we know already, the slope is equal to the k. So we don't need that negative sign there. So here are the integrated rate laws or integrated rate equations for zero, first, and second order reactions. Fortunately, you don't need to remember these, memorize them. They are on our equations and constants sheet, which I'll take you to in a moment. But they look a little bit different. 
So I'm going to manipulate these in such a way that they look like they do on the equations and constant sheets so that when you see them there, you'll realize they're the same thing, just depicted a little bit differently. And all they've done, instead of publish the, publishing them as y equals mx plus b, is move the y-intercept to the left, so it's y minus b equals mx. And that's what I've done, is I've subtracted the, the y-intercept, the concentration of a sub 0 from both sides, and I'm left with the concentration minus the initial concentration is equal to negative kt. So again, we've just moved the y-intercept over here to the left. Same thing could be done for the other two. We'll take a peek at what those look like, and then I'll take you to the equations in constant sheet. And there they both are in red and green, with the y-intercept again being moved over next to the y-value. And here they are in the kinetic section of our equations in constant sheet, depicted as we just saw them. This is, of course, the zero-order integrated rate law because this has concentration in it, and we know concentration versus time is linear for zero order. This is first order. It's got natural log, which we know to be linear for first order. And this one, of course, is second order. It has inverse concentrations in it, which we know to be linear for second. And we'll learn about half-life later. So we're going to finish off this lecture with three practice problems. I'll walk you through the first two and suggest you try the third one on your own and then come back and see how your work compares to mine. So here is a decomposition reaction of nitrogen dioxide forming nitrogen monoxide and oxygen gas. It says the concentration is monitored as it decomposes, and it's recorded on the graph directly below. The two graphs that follow it are derived from the original data. So originally, concentration versus time was graphed, and we can see it's nonlinear. That right away is telling us this must not be a zero-order reactant. If it were, it would be linear and negatively sloping. Here is the inverse of concentration versus time. And here is the natural log of concentration versus time. Natural log is also not linear. That suggests it's not first order. And of course, because inverse is linear, that suggests it's second order. Meanwhile, question A says, explain how the graph indicates that the reaction is second order. Well, the answer to that is that the graph of inverse versus concentration versus time is linear. Therefore, it is second order. And that's all we really need to say for that one. And then B says to write the rate law for the decomposition of nitrogen dioxide. It didn't say and include the value and unit for K. But if it had, I'll tell you what we would do. It didn't, meanwhile. So we write the general version of a rate law. Rate equals K. Now, if it were zero order, there would be no version of NO in there. Excuse me, NO2. But because it's second order, we do put NO2 in brackets and a superscript 2 there. There is the general version of the rate law for this. If we were being asked to provide the value and unit for k, what we could do is find the slope of this line. Be a little tricky. We'd have to estimate some points, rise over run, find the slope of this line. That would go in place of k. Remember, the slope is equal to k, so we don't switch the sign. And then the unit would be second order. Remember, there's one fewer molarities in the denominator than seconds, so it would be 1 over molarity times seconds. The unit could be derived from the slope, and then, excuse me, the value could be derived from the slope, and then the unit would be 1 over molarity times seconds. But it didn't ask us for that. All right, here's another one. This is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen gas. Looks like it's exothermic as well. Uh, the decomposition is represented by the equation above. A student monitored the decomposition of a 1 liter sample at a constant temperature of 300 Kelvin and recorded the data below. Which of the following statements is a correct interpretation of the data regarding how the order of the reaction can be determined? Now, we could look at this data and realize that there's a nonlinear relationship between uh, time and concentration. The concentration doesn't fall linearly. But frankly, if we just go to these responses, we're going to have an easier time answering it, I think. A says the reaction must be first order because there is only one reactant species. That's not true. Just because there's only one reactant species doesn't mean it's first order. It could be second. It could be zero. We'll learn more so why later. So A is definitely not true. The reaction is first order if the plot of natural log of concentration versus time is a straight line. That's true. We know that statement to be true. I'm thinking B might be right. Let's read C and D. C says the reaction is first order if the plot of inverse concentration versus time is a straight line. That is not true. That would be a second order reaction. And then D says the reaction is second order because 2 is the coefficient of H2O2 in the chemical equation. While oftentimes a coefficient of 2 in front of a reactant means it's second order, that's not always the case. We'll learn why later. So that's not always the case, and we know B to be true. B is definitely the right answer. We actually didn't need this data at all. 
Here is our third and final practice problem. Read this problem, give it a shot on your own. Come back and check your work against mine when you're done. One important thing hopefully you noticed was that the y-axes did not have concentration, natural log of concentration, and inverse concentration on them, which is what we've seen in all the prior problems. They have absorbance, natural log, and inverse absorbance. But remember, from Beer's law, absorbance and concentration are directly related. They're directly proportional. So having absorbance on these y-axes is, in a way, expressing concentration. No, they're not equal. They're equal through A and B, but they're directly related. So it's okay that absorbance is there. And the same trends exist for being zero, first, or second order if absorbance is, the y is on the y-axis as opposed to concentration. Well, because natural log of absorbance versus time is linear, or we could say because the natural log of concentration versus time is linear, we know it is first order. So this is a first order reactant or a first order reaction because the natural log of absorbance directly related to concentration versus time is linear. Remember, the slope of this line would be equal to the negative rate law constant because that's the negative sl negatively sloping line. We're almost done here, but there's a couple of things in our book I wanted to point out. Uh, back on page 59 of our ebook is this section where the integrated rate laws for zero first and second order reactions are. These have C's in them instead of in brackets A's and in brackets A sub zero. So in place of A bracket meaning concentration, the letter C is written. So that's just a, a slight difference. And I'll take you to the back of the section and show you this table. This is on page 67 of our ebook, and it summarizes a lot of what we just heard. We've got zero first and second order reactions. We see that the linear graph for zero is concentration versus time. For first, it's once again natural log. For second, it's inverse. The slopes of these two are both equal to negative k. The slope of this is equal to positive k. It's also reminding us of what the rate law constants will be for zero first and second order reactions. That's handy. It's showing us what the integrated rate laws are, which we just saw. Remember, C is the same thing as A in brackets. C sub zero is the same as A sub zero in brackets. And it's also reminding us of the rate laws for zero first and second order reactions. So putting everything in one nice little graphic. Um, you don't yet know about half-lives. You can ignore this column right now. And the bottom row, the nth order, is not something you need to know. In this class, all you need to know is zero first and second order integrated rate laws. Well, folks, once again, been a pleasure being with you today. I hope that that was interesting. Uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.